You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Welcome to the Ms. Artastic Podcast. I am your host and the creator of everything that is in Artastic Nation, Kathleen McGivern. Today I'm going to be talking about some Im- something important, which is art teacher TLC. We can't be there for the kids if we aren't there for ourselves. As we know, teaching consumes a lot of our focus power, energy, and emotions. Some years are harder than others, and some moments in the day are more stressful. And this pandemic year has added another lovely layer to it. I'm going to dive in and remind you to take care of you. You can't be there for your students or your family or fur babies if you or yourself if you don't take care of you too. It is like when you're on a plane and they like remind you to put on the face mask. Put the face mask on yourself before you help others. Right? Because we can't help anyone if we're passed out or whatever. You need to provide yourself with oxygen first because you can't give oxygen to others if you're on the floor. You especially cannot be an art teacher boss if you're too tired to allow for the awesome habit building and mindset shifts. Moving on. So we can be so stressed. Sometimes teaching is fun and other times it's completely beyond manageable and overwhelming. Teaching absorbs a lot of our patience, energy, and even our welfare. It is going to be really important that we make sure we take care of ourselves because when we're stressed and overworked, we can create ill effects for both our mental and physical health. I always find that when I'm stressed out, I get all sick a lot, a lot easier. So first is to make some art. The first teacher TLC, art teacher TLC tip is make some art, make some art. I don't know about you, but I always feel so much better after a creative session in the studio, whether I'm creating for Ms. Artastic or for myself. For me, my creating work, my sculptures, my paintings, it's what I'm I'm passionate about and it grounds me. So when I don't go to my studio, it becomes a bad habit and I start feeling really just out of sorts. So whatever your art is, whether it's doodling in your sketchbook, playing with watercolors, oil paints, collage, or sculpture with clay, find an hour of you time and create. Be sure to find a consistent time in your week though where you can have a studio or art making session. I think that we need to use it for our own social emotional states. We're doing so much to meet the social emotional learning needs for students during this time that we often forget about our own selves, how we feel and the traumas that we may have, we may be facing or might have faced. Staring at face shields or past over the past pandemic, um, isolating ourselves from that, jumping away from children because of the pandemic that we went through. Um, or if you're reading, listening to right now, it's what we, when we went through it. Um, that was not our usual. So, and we might have seen, have had trauma for this, from this experience, right? Um, so it's wearing us down and it wore us down, whether we consciously knew about it or not. More than ever, it is essential that we connect and check in with yourself, with ourselves. So for your first art teacher TLC action item, I would love for you to schedule time, preferably weekly if you can, where you can go block at a time, um, put down the cell phone and hide it, and like just make some art. Next is healthy eating. So any time is a good time to do this or remind ourselves to get back to doing this. But for some art teacher TLC, an idea or suggestion, right, you can always disagree with me, is that I think we need to visit our healthy eating goals. So even if you consider yourself to consider yourself to be a healthy eater, can you do it better? Is there something that you can eliminate? Good nutrition can help you reach and maintain a healthy weight and, and reduce risk of chronic diseases. And it makes us feel pretty good. Maybe not right away, but you will feel good. I love mac and cheese, but an hour later after eating an overfilled plate, 
my stomach immediately disagrees with my decision. I also feel pretty sluggish. Fill your diet with proteins, fiber, calcium, and healthy carbohydrates. Ones such as vegetables, from fruit, those kinds of things. Eliminating some of the processed food, fast food, pastas, and starchy food will do wonders. Less sugar too. Junk food is called junk food for a reason. There is nothing really that nutritional in it. As well, if our goal is to give ourselves TLC, we have to think of the whole picture, which is why I'm talking about healthy eating in this episode. If you are hoping to give your whole body love, you have to consider all parts of it. For me, I try to eat mostly healthy meals. Um, But, of course, one day a week or so, I usually make something or order out something because it's tasty. (laughs) Um, It's not healthy. Uh, But it makes me happy, right? So you you have to have balance. (laughs) So like pizza, um, Indian food. Mmm, love it. So, but that is something that I do, um, and you do you. You need to do what is good for you, of course. And this is, a su- this is a suggestion for TLC. So again, you do you. Remember, if you want to fuel your body and mind, you also have to consider what you're eating. If you're like me and you don't eat meat and struggle to find sources of protein, or if you just want to limit your meat intake because it's expensive, reducing the meat meals cuts down on the grocery bill by hundreds. (laughs) Try looking towards replacing the meat on your dish with a couple more sides. I'll be honest, I eat a lot of food. People always think, oh, what do you eat if you're vegetarian? Well, like everything, (laughs) except for the meat. (laughs) So, um, and I like to eat a lot. <laughs> I I eat a ton. I just love eating, okay? So, I like eating variety too. I don't want to just eat like one thing. Blech. Gross. So, I balance out different types of plant proteins and veggies. Like having carrots, quinoa, or like whole grain rice and chickpeas or legumes. Sometimes I have like four different <laughs> vegetable sides or like protein, plant-based protein sides on my plate. I just like to taste different things. It's just my thing. I don't bake, so <laughs> cooking's my thing. Um, if you ask me what I'm going to bake for Christmas or whatever, the answer is nothing. <laughs> I just don't like to do it. So for me, protein replacements, chia seeds, because they're easy. Uh, you can add that to like oatmeal, cereal, salads, smoothies, baking, soup, or make chia seed pudding. It's also high in fiber, so that's good for the next day in the bathroom. Um, And you don't taste them, they just disappear into everything. You can add pumpkin seeds or eat them. They're so delicious, especially roasted and salted, Um, very high in protein. Hemp seeds are high in protein. They're so good, oh my goodness. Um, They have omegas, they taste nice. I sprinkle them in cereals, smoothies, soups, sandwiches. You can just sprinkle them like in the the sandwiches, like in the mustard or whatever. Um, FYI, kids, kids, husbands, partners, whatever, don't even know it's there. (laughs) You can put it in wraps, um, anything. I love it on yogurt, like just playing yogurt, because that would be gross with like cherry yogurt. Ew. Anyway, um, maybe it's not you. I actually don't even know. I've never tried it. This is a green eggs and ham situation, so I might say I like it. In fact, Sam I am, but I don't know. It just sounds gross to me. Um, chickpeas are delicious. I like to marinate them in lemon and like olive oil for a bit with some onions to make a chickpea salad. You can make chana masala or add it to bean salad. You can easily make hummus with a food processor. Honestly, I didn't realize that it was really that easy to make hummus. Basically, it's just like garlic and olive oil and soft (laughs) chickpeas (laughs) blended. I have no idea why I've been buying it this whole time. <laughs> but anyway, mm, hummus. Oh, so good. Um, you can also like take some tortillas or pitas and just put that in the oven, cut up already into like little triangles. And then you have a nice little chip and dip. Mm. So um, pita wraps, another thing you could do is add falafels into them instead. So chickpeas, please. Beans are 
really cheap, especially if they're not, like, if you're buying them dried out. Um, so cheap. Lots of protein, lots of uses. Green beans, if you have a garden, they're, like, super easy to grow. Um, you can pickle them. You can just eat, freeze them. You can eat them forever if you have a garden. And then you'll probably get sick of them. But that's okay. Now, I'm definitely not saying that you should be a vegetarian. But if you have a picky eater in your home that doesn't like meat. Or if you're looking for like healthy protein replacements. You can try these ideas. Um, because I know people are always asking me like, what do you eat? <laughs> I eat things. <laughs> um, so... Honestly, I just eat everything but the meat. So I just wanted to offer these ideas for plant proteins. Should you want to try this occasionally, like for a lunch, replace, you know, maybe a lunch without meat or whatever. Um, it's a healthy eating tactic. Uh, again, this is an idea. I'm not saying you have to do what I do, what I say or like agree with me ever. But I live on the West Coast and in BC, we're kind of radical and outlawish. And right now there is a everything everywhere has vegetarian or vegan options like I've noticed that most restaurants now have here not when I travel outside of BC let me tell you <laughs> in BC especially in like Vancouver lower mainland because we also have such an array of cultures a lot of which don't also eat meat um, or certain types of meat uh, so it's pretty common now that everybody has vegetarian options. Like I went to a restaurant, a good common chain restaurant, and before it would there's it would only be meat options, right? You'd have to ask for no meat. And then now I went in there and like the vegetarian menu was bigger than the rest. <laughs> I was like, whoa, times have changed. Because ten years ago, let me tell you, it was a challenge to be a vegetarian. Going out with friends. Anyway, so, yep, this is an option. Um, it's really easy to do if you want to make a healthy choice once in a while. Um, it will also greatly reduce your grocery bill and freezer space. I mean, dried lentils cost a few loonies. Unless, of course, you don't have a loony, then I guess like a dollar bill. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a pause from this episode to let you know about my art resources for educators. You see, I create art resources for art teachers, general teachers, or homeschooling parents to use in the elementary and middle school levels. I really enjoy creating artworks that will target various areas of the curriculum, encourage students to experiment with a range of mediums, and I like to work with themes and topics that are of high student interest. I'm always keeping my eye open for what is all the rage in the student world. I want to save teachers time and therefore I design high quality art lessons that will provide teachers with all the elements they need to teach and implement a lesson successfully. From the lesson plan to rubrics, reflections, and all the steps broken down into visual slides, I've got you covered. My art resources can be found in my Teachers Pay Teachers Store, Ms. Artastic, or by subscribing to my art resource library for art teachers, the Artastic Collective. Find links to my TPT store and my membership in my blog, MsArtastic.com. Now, back to this episode. Okay, next is meditation. So I love meditation. I do it for me and often uh, incorporate it into my classroom. It is a great way to transition into creating art in your classroom. And you can do complete meditation with music. You can do guided meditation. You can even make an art version and do a guided meditation with a drawing. I love doing that. Um, they can like visualize and like think about gratitude while drawing it, whatever. So um, mindful art starts such as meditation, music with dim lights and sound sketching can be a wonderful art classroom start, especially like if you're listening to this right now and it's still a pandemic <laughs> but or if it's in the future and hopefully the pandemic is now over. Um, if you're listening to this, then just when there's times of stress, like maybe after exams or whatever, when kids are needing to sanitize um, before the start of the day, uh, this gives 
people something to do while they're patiently waiting for everybody to get settled when they come in. Um, and this will help us all feel calm and help the ca- classroom feel balanced and quiet. And then you can easily transition into a lesson. But meditation is necessary for you too. Meditation for us, the adults, can reduce stress and control anxiety. And I don't know about you, but this year um, and some years uh, make me feel very stressed and anxious. I don't know what's going to happen sometimes. I have no means of keeping um, myself focused or calm and inner peace. So if you need to help work on these things and help yourself with that, Um, This can totally help center you and bring your attention back to the present moment, allowing you not to worry about the future because, hey, it hasn't happened yet. And don't worry about the past because it's already happened and therefore we cannot change it. So here's your action item. Try meditating daily or weekly. It might be a great way for you to start your morning. 10 minutes of meditation. If you get up 10 minutes earlier, you can add this into your every day and it has been proven that it is beneficial both for your emotional well-being and overall health. You can even keep a journal and record of your thoughts, musings, and how you feel after a meditative section. Okay, next we're going to talk about exercise. One way to keep care of yourself during times when you're having feelings of stress and a sense of overwhelm is to exercise. And I know that you hear this a lot and if you're like me, you're like, yeah, 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 I'll exercise or I'll start Monday, but then you never actually do. Suddenly it's been three months and you haven't even gone on a walk. However, like we need to do this, especially when we're feeling stressed out. It throws the stress, the overwhelm, the anxiety out the door. It will center you and ground you. I find that after a workout session that any thoughts about work or what happened in the day are lost and gone. Sometimes I get fixated on something that happened and I will think about it and relive it over and over. Exercising makes all those racing thoughts disappear and really allows me to move on in the day. And one way to get exercise into your day without making a huge production with it is by walking at lunch. So if you don't want to do a full workout plans on YouTube or use weights, or if you're short on time, you can totally go on a walk around your school's neighborhood. I'm going to be honest, my exercise habit has not been implemented. I am on again, off again, all the time. And this is partly because I have just, I feel like I have too much on my plate with being, at the time of recording this, a full-time teacher and a misertastic. I'm pretty exhausted. Which I know is not an excuse because when I reflect on the day, I realize that I could have instead of watching like TV, a show on TV, I could have worked out. So trust me when I say it, I get it. And I'm saying these things to me as much as I am to the wider world. This is, this podcast, sorry, is my reminder to me to continue to work on creating my own better habits in my life. Now, I briefly mentioned this already, but if you feel like you're short of time with family and stuff or the time of year, depending on when you're listening, um, or just like your side gigs like me, like you just don't have enough time, then you can always go on walks or runs at lunch. I've done both and I feel great when I do it. Running sucks the first few days, but after you get over that initial horrible pain, it's all gain. I honestly thought I was going to throw up when I first went on a run. Um, Walks are good. I love going for lunch walks and getting fresh air. When I returned to the school, that little break made me feel so good. And I can approach the afternoon with clarity. Okay, finally is adult passion hour. So I think this is a fun one. So play. Explore your hobby each week to give yourself a little TLC and escape from everything going on. You could also do a passion hour for adults where you explore passion or hobby or interest for an hour each week. You could set a time and date on your calendar and do it. One hour straight, no cell phone, no interruptions. You could try setting a timer and hide your phone and get yourself to play for a full hour. Let yourself immerse in making art crafting, sewing, photography, painting, research, whatever. Whatever makes you happy, do it. Do it for one hour. Don't stop at 55 minutes. One hour. One hour of being you. 
But if you happen to get into that flow stage in the psychological spectrum, that moment when you don't even notice time and everything seems to be moving seamlessly, then let that roll, my friend. Well, my lovely friend, those are some of my ideas. Do you have to do them? Obviously not. I'm just voicing my opinion and you are always welcome to disagree with me or have ideas beyond what I've listed here. And if you have more and would like to share those ideas, you can always come on as a guest or comment on the blog post show notes um, or chat with me about it on Twitter. I am Mizertastic and my blog is www.mizertastic.com. I think that it's always good to have a healthy conversations around our mental and physical well-being. We have to be here for ourselves and for each other. Otherwise, what is the point? Who will be there? Love you lots, Artastic Nation. Um, if you want to join for the conversation, you can join the Artastic Nation Facebook group where I am there for supporting art teachers and allowing for art teacher successes for a much more in-depth experience, the ultimate art teacher hack. To get you leveled up and fired up, um, you can join the Artastic Collective. It opens in Januarys and Augusts of every year. So that's artasticcollective.com. And please be sure to visit the blog Ms. Artastic for more art teacher ideas, tips, and inspiration. I'm Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic, signing out.